there was a, just a gut-wrenching cold chill that just went through every core of my body. And I started screaming, you know that dream I had last night, Terry? I just have a feeling about this. What would you do if you had a dream that told you you were in danger and a strange little voice told you you could avoid it if you listened? For Terry and Rennell Wallace, it should have been an easy flight from one small airport in Utah to another. But Rennell's vision from the night before began coming true in every detail. The visibility started shrinking. The snow started coming down and forcing me lower and lower and lower. By the time Terry realized that they were in trouble, there wasn't a safe way out. And then through the clouds, they spotted a mountain. He started pulling up on the steering column, and we started a real steep ascent. And as we did, it was, I just started screaming. This is just like Colossus on the roller coaster. Ah! And all of a sudden, I heard this clunk, clunk, clunk as the, as the propeller hit a tree, and then it started skidding into the, to the ground. And, and then I knew I was going to get smashed. Parts of the plane started to fly up along the side, and the sparks started to fly up underneath the cockpit. We came to a dead halt, and there was not a scratch or bruise on either one of us. And I was shocked. Rennell kicked open the door. An explosion blew out the roof of the cockpit and her with it. I remember seeing parts of my coat and flames falling off and dripping down onto my pants and onto the ground. I remember seeing my hands on fire. Terry escaped with minor injuries, but Rennell's wounds were killing her, with burns over 75% of her body. Her face was burned beyond recognition. As EMTs rushed to a hospital, she moved closer and closer to death. And I said, somebody, please, I can't breathe. And the male nurse bent down to my ear and he said, stop trying. We'll do all the work for you. And at that moment, I remember everything got very black. And then it became clearer and clearer. And as I looked around, I realized I was standing up in the ambulance. Technically, Rennell died that day. Most people do not know that they're dead. Their consciousness is fully conscious of what's going on, and yet there they are the shell of who they thought they were lying there being pronounced dead. Rennell was having a near-death experience. And then in the distance, I saw a woman coming toward me dressed in white. And she moved very quickly and stood in front of me. And when she stopped, she smiled. And she called me out by name. And my first thought was, do you know me? And she answered back, Rennell, it's Grandma. Rennell recognized the woman as her late grandmother at about age 25, and she had a message. She told her to conquer fear and return to life in the physical world. And that I would need to build the strength to stay strong to overcome the ordeals ahead of me. And that I needed to come to learn and appreciate the great love and power within me. Then her grandmother showed Rennell her physical body. And I was in there by myself. And the room was very dark, and it was very cold. My first thought was, that's not me, because it was so ugly. Rennell looked at her tortured body and told her grandmother there was no way she could return. And she said, look. And in the path, I saw a young man coming. And he says, Mom, what are you doing here? Rennell saw that this was her son, a son yet unborn. His name was Nathaniel. And I went and put my arms around him, and I said, Nathaniel. He says, Mom, you have to go back. He says, I need you, Mom. He says, there's so much I have to do, and I can't do it without you. Finally, Rennell decided to return. She regained consciousness in a Salt Lake City burn center and was released six weeks later. But her biggest task was to come. Rennell arrived home physically intact, but far from being healed. She wore a tight mask to keep scar tissue from spreading on her face. Fire was her worst nightmare. It literally terrorized me. Every time I turned the stove on, I would jump a mile high. Less than two months after returning home from the hospital, Rennell and Terry were up before dawn to go to another surgical appointment. And I saw these flames coming out of the neighbor's house. The flames were coming from inside her neighbor's house. Rennell knows the family inside is asleep. Her biggest fear is now facing her, fire. And that's when I heard a voice. 
and uh, that voice was so clear. I went over and I looked at the window and I saw the flame from the roof and it said, get over there, they're asleep. Her grandmother's message about conquering her fears flashed through her mind. As Terry called 911, Rennell ran to help. And I started pounding on the window and pounding on the door and there was no answer. I ran back to the garage and the door was flipping up and down from the electrical switch and I um, tried to move between the two cars to get in and that's when the garage door shut behind me and I was trapped inside the garage. And it was filling up real rapidly with black, thick smoke. And I was choking that uh, I started screaming, if, you're, if anyone's in there, please get out, get out, your house is on fire. And finally, I heard this loud screeching sound of a woman's voice screaming at the top of her lungs. I said, if you're OK, get out, your house is on fire. Rennell managed to kick open the garage door and meet the woman in front. There were two children asleep inside, and they ran in to save them. I said, stay underneath the smoke, stay underneath the smoke. She was gone in a second, and she came back. The house was a total loss, but everyone survived. Oh, thank you. And she started to say, thank you, thank you. And I started screaming, thank you, thank you. This is why are you thanking me? And I said, you'll never understand. You'll never understand. Rennell's courage won national attention and presidential recognition. And here I was faced with something that I thought would paralyze the rest of my life, but it was the greatest blessing of my life because it has helped me to conquer the greatest fears that I have. Rennell's greatest blessing was still to come. Although doctors told her it would not be possible, eight years after the plane crash, Rennell gave birth to a son. She believes it is the boy she met in her near-death experience. She named him Nathaniel. Oh, my big guy. Okay. I love you. Every once in a while, I'll go, Nathaniel, I'll just think, will he respond? Will he look at me in that same look that I saw on the other side? And doggone it, if it, once in a while he doesn't turn around and I see that little bit of a spark in his eye. And I'll go, Nathaniel, it's you. And he'll come in and put his arms around me and say, get me. <laughs> and it's him. Above all, Rennell has learned to listen to that gentle voice, her miracle. It helped me to learn to be more confident of um, listening to the burning within, to listen to the heart. If it hadn't been for that voice, I would have never gone into that fire. After writing a book and lecturing on the subject of fear, Rennell decided to confront the biggest fear she has left, flying. She recently joined Terry for their first flight together since the crash. I'm more focused on, really, there's no fear that I can't conquer. I've gotten to the point that, uh, you know, everything is possible. You just have to believe everything is possible. Everything. <laughs>